Oh yeah, well, here we go. Yeehaw! We probably kill somebody with these. You gotta be careful, Bob. But watch this. All right, we're going live, folks. Hi, folks. I'm Bob Schrupp, physical therapist. Brian Heine, physical therapist. We're the real most famous physical therapist on the internet. You know, opinion, of course. Today, Brad, we're going to talk about the amazing tennis ball cure for knots and muscle pain. This could be in your neck, back, shoulder, hip, arm, foot. I mean, there's, you know, it's just a simple little device, but it does really help out. It with really conditions. does. It's very useful. All right, let's take care of business here first, Brad. If you are new to our channel, especially if you're watching, like I saw mm -hmm. the rebroadcast of uh, YouTube. Please take a second to subscribe to us. We got a subscription button here or here. We provide videos on stay healthy, fit, pain free, and we upload every day. Also, if you haven't already and you're on YouTube, go over to Facebook and like us because today, the Facebook, the Facebook, yeah, yeah we are giving away one of these. This yeah. is the the Can Do C A N D O uh, Dome. The dome. Yeah, it's a dome. See. And works really good for balance. You can use it on either side. You can use it on this side. Oh, good Lord. We're going to have an injury here. Okay. And also, you can go the other way. Oh, oh you're going to show that one, too? Well, I'm in worse, Bob. I got my safety harness on. They'll always, always show proof. And we got a whole video on how to uh, you know, demonstrate and how to use this. So, right. Um, we just made that recently. So it's already on Facebook. You just look for this post. It's a picture of it, and you like that post, and you're in the contest. So is that. How can you beat that, Brad? Well, I don't know. I, I find out. There probably is no way. All right. The way Brad and I – am I back? I'm back. You're back in here. Uh, the way Brad and I usually run things, we're going to go over and, and show you these different ways to use the tennis ball, and then we're going to go ahead and take questions at the end. So if you have questions – uh, save them for the end. Put them up at the end. Right now, you can say hi to us if you want, and you can like us or put gifts as the heart sees. Oh, yeah, thumbs up. Bounce across this. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Facebook. So let's start off with the first one, Brad. Mm -hmm. All right, so you're going to need a tennis ball or two tennis balls. This is really nice. You're going to need a sock. Um, you can also use, if you want to be a little more aggressive, a lacrosse ball. No. Um, th th those are a lot harder, obviously, mm -hmm. and, and, and they're going to give you a different feel. But I actually like this on some of the parts of my body. Right. So. It's just like if you get a massage, some of the things in deeper or not so much. It depends on the individual and their situation. All right, so he's got two balls in the socket. Brad's going to show you a neck uh, thing. This is really good for the upper cervical spine, for the really upper neck. Yep. Right? Especially that. those headaches. And yep. I, I've used this with patients, and uh, this is exactly what they do. I tell them to get a couple uh, tennis balls. You're going to have to move, Bob. Yep, I'm going to get out of the way. Balls. And this is, you're not going to do it in bed typically. It's going to be done on a carpeted floor. Works the best. And you put that not on the bone, right on the, not on the occiput bone, but just before where the muscles attach to that. And you can roll your head up and down like this. And oftentimes what I find is people will just become very comfortable and they'll find that one spot and they'll just stay there and relax for a minute or two and let that uh, muscles loosen up. If you got a headache or that neck ache, you can just feel it relax and release. Okay, so we go like this. And you can work it down as well into the more of the muscles. Again, it should feel good. If it does produce any unusual pain or anything, it's not the thing, or readjust it. All right, we're not looking for increased pain here. We're looking for decreased pain right. here. So. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go up against the wall, Brad. I'm going to take one. Get, it works with you can put it in a nylon. I didn't have a nylon. Um, oh, Bob! I didn't want to take one. I didn't want to take one from her. I thought she'd be upset with me. Wow, well, she was right. Butt. So um, I just got a long sock here. I'm gonna go up against the wall. Lonnie, can you make sure you're following me? Yeah. All right. So we're gonna use this for you know this is when you often get those knots in the upper traps, right. red or maybe between the shoulder yeah, blades. Right, right in yeah. here. Oftentimes they get that other trigger point. So there, you just yeah. flip this over there and get it into position. And once I now you can go up against the wall. I just think this works really good because you gives you kind of control how much pressure you put right, on it. Right. Right. Now there's something I want you to do besides just putting mm. pressure on it. I'm gonna have you start with this, but then I want you to try maybe doing some chin tucks, or oh. maybe try uh, try bending to the side. All right. So if the pain's on this side, can you see this, Brad? Well, you go ahead and I'll show okay. what you're doing. I'm, I'm bending to the side of the pain. Right. So if the pain's on the right, you lean it against like Bob's on the wall, and then the neck is going to turn like this. Yeah, and then the other thing you can even just try turning to that side yep, so while more, that pain is there. Rotation. All the while, you got that pressure on that 
muscle and that tight muscle. We're going to help loosen it up with some movement. Yeah, it's surprising. A lot of times it's the movement that helps take away the pain. Right. So, and again, you can do this between the shoulder blades. You can get right up on the upper trapezius. Sure. And uh, just a great one for doing it. You could do it laying down too. Oh, those yeah. Same ones. Yeah. As a matter of fact, laying down, you really don't need the sock. Right. You can get right in there. That's going to be hard to see because i got the same color. Ooh, ooh, well, there you can see. Oh, you can see it. Oh, yeah. And again, you could yeah. do the same motions. You could do the the, the uh, side bending, and you could do the rotations mm -hmm. and such like that. You might want a pillow along with it to give yourself sure. some support. All right. All right, Brad, you're going to show us two balls uh, for the mid back. Yeah. So um, let me put it on your back first. Just to, can you face that way? I certainly can. So this this is good for right in this mid back thoracic area. I don't really like it for the low back. I, uh, for the low back, I think one is okay. Mm -hmm. I just don't like this. Uh, it just, I just don't. <laughs> All right, why don't you go ahead, and, go ahead and set it up for the mid back, Brad? All right. By the way, we had somebody that said bonjour, so I'm sure she must be. And then we had somebody from Italy. Oh, good. So, so we got oh. France and Italy uh, represented. Now, this. You're gonna, you can see I'm holding up because if I just lay all my weight into it, for me, it's well, it even changes the tone of my voice. But there we go. But I'm working it, and you can just roll it. You find that tender spot where the trigger point is. And this is one of those things that should hurt so good. You know, if it hurts, it should be like, oh, it hurts, but it feels kind of good. And as you do it more, it feels better. That's what we're looking for. Those are the responses. And I'm going to work down. Because I, I got it felt good at first, and then after a little bit, it's like, ah, and then it rolled up, and then all of a sudden, oh, I hit that spot again. I'm going to work all the way up from about T7, my mid-back, and I'm going up towards my neck now. Oh, you know what worked really good, Bob? Could you grab me a towel? Sure. This, oh, you're going to do the, the towel? Well, thing. just to support my neck, because my neck gotcha. is tired. Oh, and so you just go like this. And now all of a sudden I can relax my head. Sure. And, and give then, it support. Yep, yeah, just so that those neck muscles don't get too tired and you can create a neck ache while you get ready to go back. Now, again, if he's going to work on the low back, I would suggest using one ball. And sometimes it's nice to work. To me, the only way I found this comfortable, Brad, I hope people can hear me, is I was kind of like right above the pelvis here and worked along that line. It felt really good on that. Right on the here. So let's use this. So it would be like right across that Ilya. Yeah, right along car. there. I don't think we even need to show it. I mean, that's that's what you'd be doing is trying to work along there. I'm mean, sure. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think we need to um, demonstrate. Yeah. Let's do this, Brad. We're going to get up and close and up close and personal here. Ooh. All right. Yeah, thank you. So this is, Brad and I always say this, that if we're having trouble with something ourselves, we become much better at treating it because... Yeah, you know, we know what people are going through and I've been having a little bit of golfer's elbow here and uh, uh, it Especially I feel when I'm doing like curls and stuff like that Brad. sure but uh, so I, I took the ball and I compared both sides and What I did is just very simply you can take the ball and you can roll it along Whoops, Ooh, you can roll catch. it along on the, this is too slippery. I got to need a lesser yeah. slippery table You, you want to put a towel? Ball. Oh, oh, yeah, this is better this is where the lacrosse ball comes in. Yeah, here. it's a little rubbery. It doesn't have. And that. it's funny that you say it because that's what I used last night. Oh, really? I did use the lacrosse ball. Did you ever play lacrosse? No, but my son did. Oh, so really? I, I had a ball there. But this this works really good, um, especially even if you're getting pain on the like if it's right on the epicondyle itself mm -hmm. or that on ball. the outside yep. uh, here. Work the muscles leading up to it because these muscles all attach into it. So you want to get them loose, right? Get the, get the tension off, and it's going to allow it to relax and heal better. Precisely, Brad. Precisely. So I did it on this side, and then I did it on this side, and oh my God, what a difference! I could tell this yeah, one is a lot right. tighter. Um, it, it it really, I can feel it. Oh, yeah, I mean, I can feel it right now, even. Oh yeah. And I'll you can it, you can work the other side too. You can work the, uh, on the extensors too. All right. So, so one is palm down, others palm up. Again, real simple. Doesn't cost you a lot of money, but it's a good way to massage the area. Oh, sure. Um, and, and if you're having trouble with any either one of those elbow problems. All right. Now we're going to the piriformis, Brad. So I think you're back up. Again. Oh yeah. Now when I'm on the piriformis, I'm definitely going to the tennis ball personally. We should probably show where the piriformis is, real quick. Yeah. Brad. Let's get all. What's his name? Napoleon. Napoleon. Sorry, now we don't have it hooked up right now. Can you see that, Lonnie? I don't know. So the piriformis runs from this triangle bone right here, your sacrum, and it's, and it's a triangle-shaped muscle, 
and it goes right out to the hip here. It's a, it's actually out to the greater trochanter. So it's a little muscle right here. But what happens is it can it can compress right over the sciatic nerve and send pain down your leg. It's called false uh, sciatica sometimes because it's not really from a disc problem. It's from it's actually from a muscle problem. So you got to loosen that muscle up. All right. So again, that muscle it, it attaches to that greater trochanter, that bony spot right there in your hip, back to the sacrum. I'm just going to start. If you do this, I'm going to get it on. There we go. Can you see it? There we go. If you do this and the symptoms, pain, or whatever down the leg get worse, you're not on the right spot. You want to get away from that spot and get on a spot where it loosens that muscle and relieves the pain down the leg. So I'm working it here. I'm going to come up over towards that hip bone a little bit more. There you go. You can just barely see it. Oh. Now, moving right along, Brad, we can go to the IT band, too. So the IT band runs along the side of the thigh here. Right. And it, it actually attaches into the muscle called the tensor fascia lata. That's so, a lot of saying. Yeah, that's a lot, a lot of saying, isn't it? Yeah. So Brad can show that, too. You just kind of go over to the side. You can work that whole buttock area there. Yeah. I'm going to start up higher where that TFL, the tensor fascia lata muscle growth, I'm going to work it down and you can even get down on, right onto that IT band you see yeah there you can see it and work it from the hip down towards the knee if I don't be careful it's really a good idea to do this on the floor not on one of these right tables. this is a little bit too soft right too. all right I could fall off sure uh, and that'd be terrible yeah that would just all right let's Brad I'll go go ahead and do one against the wall now I try not to be obscene here but I actually Again, I'm falling apart here. I'm actually having a little bit of hip flexor problems oh, here. Yeah. I feel with running, and I've been stretching it out, but it really works. Again, I use the lacrosse ball or the tennis ball. It really worked well. I just went up against the wall like this, and I leaned against it. I rolled back and forth like this against it, and I got right into that tendon, right. and I felt good this morning. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, and again, it's one you could do. Uh, laying down flat, mm -hmm. but it actually almost worked better on the wall. A little community. more control. I think. I, I, it was more control. Mm -hmm. It was a lot more control. All right. Um, the other one we're going to show, Brad, is if you're getting that high hamstring injury, uh, where, yeah. where it, let's show on the spine over here, Brad. So, yeah, here are the sit bones. Those are the bones where the hamstrings attach into, and a lot of times people uh, get some damage on their tendons right here. And it's a real bear to try to um, get these better, aren't they? Brad? Right. They, they tend to be real stubborn. But you know, you can have success if, and those sit bones, like if you're sitting on a hard surface, you can feel. I can right. feel it right now. And we want to get just below, yeah, we're going to go those. below them, right, right. here. here. Yep. And that's where you're going to want to work it for a hamstring injury. I actually, uh, I didn't pull it, but I, I had an injured hamstring after a race. It's actually a triathlon, and I, I worked this on the edge of a picnic table, and boy, I got relief in about 30 seconds. I thought I had a severe pulled hamstring, and I, I did this, or treatment identical to it. And you can feel it when you get around that sit bone. This is a nice one because you can really get a good feel for it. I think it, with my arms right here supporting my weight and my weight on my heels, very good control. And you can adjust how much intensity you want over that muscle area. All right, why don't you go into shin splints, Brad? Oh, yeah. Especially anterior shin splints. These are when you're getting pain on the front of the, yeah, right in here. Um, um, it, this works out really good for this. Again, I was having a little bit of this too, Brad. Man, I'm just, like I said. Yeah, you're just a pile of, just uh, a mess. pile of pain. But all these things have helped me. This, this, this actually, I, I had a minor version of it, Brad, sure. because it got better right away. Okay, and and that, uh, that's the key is to get after these. Yeah, you get on it right away. Um, I got new shoes right away, and I got, uh, I started doing this, yep. and it just really made a difference. And then you can also do, um, you can do the calf too, um, especially, um, especially if you're getting some shin splints that are in the back. Right. You know, they can certainly. That's going to help that too. Woo. So that, that shows up pretty well. Yeah. She, Brad, I can, uh, it's a little can tender see it. too. This is uh, you can feel when you get in, over those tender spots. So and work the intensity appropriately. Don't get overly aggressive right away. All right. Then the final one is you could go ahead and do the bottom of the foot, Brad. Oh you yeah. Show, show that. Uh, you better believe I'm ready, Bob. I just need to dodge this shoe. 
So, and we, we've done a video on this, doing this for uh, plantar fasciitis. There we go. Yeah, you know, I don't have any foot problems, but boy, this feels good, Bob. I'm telling you. Yeah, I, I might do this for the rest of the I'm glad we video. can make you happy. Bob. Well, well, you know, it's it's nice to be happy. <laughs> there you go. But boy, it, it is a nice. Now I'm going to try it with a lacrosse ball once and see if there's I know as much difference. And yeah, All right, I'm going to go ahead and take a question. Brett. Okay, let's someone, do it. Someone said she had a bulgy disc. It was 0.6. Now it's doubled to 1.2. How much disc will I have left? She's having herniated disc surgery. Sir, what do I need to look forward to my future after surgery? Well, <laughs> I don't know how much we want to intervene in this, but right. uh, first off, personally, I would not have surgery unless you're getting pain down the leg and you're getting weakness. Um, I would, uh, to personally, I would try the McKenzie technique first. I'd make sure that you exhausted all the therapy options. Right. Uh, because you know, when you start taking disc out, suddenly there's the, the bone becomes sloppier, and then all of a sudden they want to fuse the back, and then it just leads, it cascades. You know, yeah. I don't want to scare you because there's times where it is absolutely appropriate. If you have uh, pain down your leg and, and you're getting weakness or it's just unrelenting pain, it won't go away, right. and you try the McKenzie technique and it doesn't work, um, I, I would definitely, you know, have the surgery. I just had a patient who, you know, he was a definite candidate, but they just went in and snipped a little bit of it, and they cleared it up. And they cleared easily. it up. Yeah, yeah. But he he was already getting weakness too, and in fact, he's had some residual weakness from okay. it. Okay. So, yeah. So hopefully, we're just going to assume that you've already tried some conservative approaches, and the doctors are you know are uh, approaching with that. Uh, I would. Set. I would personally, I would avoid fusion if I could, because uh, what happens is you fuse one level. And then it puts extra stress on the levels above it, and then all of a sudden, and I, I can tell you about this personally because my my mom went through this, you know. Mm -hmm. And again, hers back was so bad, but they fused one level, and of course it it broke down at the level above it, and then she had to fuse it again. Sure. And it's just it's a mess. All right, you wanna? She oh, he said I am having pain all the way down my leg, foot, and numbness. Therapy has not worked. Okay. Yeah, Alex, then you're, you're right in giving it a shot. Sure. So. Yeah. Lonnie? Somebody's Lonnie? asking what type of balls are you using. Oh, to the question is what kind of balls we're using. Um, either just a regular tennis ball. If you're going to buy one, um, I don't know. If you buy a lacrosse ball, would you prefer that? I personally would go with a tennis ball. Okay. Because if the lacrosse ball is too hard and it's too aggressive, it's you, you just can't use it, but right. if you use a tennis ball if it's yeah, if it's too soft, soft, you'll still be able to use it, right? Yeah, you'll still be able to, And I don't know if they're cheaper or not. You usually, gotta get tennis balls three in a bundle, two yeah. those tubes, or just go to the tennis racket, and go to the oh, tennis court, and see if you can find just one. find someone who wants a dog and steal it from them, and it'll probably be a little slobbery. Go to the neighbors, yeah, it'll be a little slobbery, but you buy any recommendation for? Severe hyperextended knees and weakness. Hyperextended knees. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, one thing is you're gonna, you really don't want to um, promote that. I mean, I had that. I was, I, I was standing where I'd stand with my knees hyperextended. So we would teach people to stand with their legs kind of straddled like this, one foot in front of the other, and do a slight bend to the sure. knee all the times. I mean, part of it is just being conscious of it and don't ever stand with your knees locked right you want to have a slight bend and some people have that habit and they're not aware of it if you are aware of that that's going to take some a lot of mental awareness to change that but you definitely want to and it's going to help out your knees especially over the long run yeah the other thing i, I taught my wife because she was always sitting with her feet up like this mm -hmm. and and forward on something and it was stretching out the back oh, of her knee sure. i was like you always want to keep you know, if you put your feet up, you want to make sure the whole leg is supported somewhat. You know, you don't want to just have stretch. Am I making sense? You don't want to just have, yeah, like that. Like this, yeah, right? like that, because that's going to stretch out the knee some more. There is a brace. There is bracing you can do. Mm -hmm. I mean, if it's if it's, if it's it's really bad right. um, and, and to, to protect the knee. But it, hopefully, you, want, you know, I, I guess we're talking to the general public out there. You don't want to get to that point where the knee gets so hyperextended. Yeah, braces are not convenient. Uh, a lot of times they don't work as good as they think they're supposed to, and you get a custom one made, and they can run into 
yeah. this year's. So again, I, did we say we're talking about a hyperextended need? I, I'm not sure if I repeated the question or not. So well, that's a good point. <laughs> it's too late now. <laughs> Ani, you got another one? Uh, it's for tight upper trapezius scalenes, and then if she have a hard time swallowing, so what do you recommend to that? Well, it, she's having pain in the upper trapezius and the scalenes. A lot of times that is a postural thing, especially with swallowing. Sure. If you've got a head forward posture yeah. like this, yeah. now try to, I mean, if you're the average person, try to swallow when you're in this position. Now do it in this position. So what? the one thing you're going to want to start is with chin tucks. Yep. First, Brad, want to show how to do those? So we're here, the chin's going in. And you want a good posture right off the bat. Don't, you know, don't be slouching, try this. Get yourself up, shoulders back. And do some gentle chin tucks, not going down, but in and back like this, like someone's going to take their hand into your face and just backing up your face like so. And do about 10 of those, and you can do those three, four times a day. More than that if they're working out well. And if you're getting pain in the scalene, you know, we would recommend you maybe watch one of our videos on the McKenzie approach to the, uh, for neck pain. Yeah. Because um, right. uh, and, and, you're going to work on extensions. Um, you're going to start getting movement in the right direction to stop that pain going down in sure. there. Right. But uh, it, that posture is always really important. Uh, someone said they fell and broke their tailbone. Um, we, we had showed a pillow that we had um, recommended to use. But one little trick that you can do um, right after you, you break your tailbone, you just take a pillow and you fold it in half like this. Yep. And then you're going to sit so that the pillow hits the thigh. Why don't you go over on the side of the... Sure. Am I still in the... Okay. There you go. So we get a So I'm file. sitting like this, and now I'm, I've got pressure off the tailbone, and it's all on my thighs instead. Uh, we had one patient who told us that um, he actually uh, just saved him on a plane trip. Because he's <laughs> like, I wouldn't have been able to sit. And, and you know, the pressure's off. It's a temporary thing. Tailbones are tough. We did do a video on that. Um, there's, we had recommended using the Thermatex, remember? Uh, right, you have to get some deep heat. Yeah, accelerate the Thermatex heat. is an infrared uh, system that gets really deep heat. Sure. And uh, beyond that, sometimes it's rest. I mean, right. really they can down. be slow healers. Yeah, they're, they're they not going to heal fast. Um, yeah, so you know, Google Bob and Brad. Uh, a tailbone or coccidelia. Yeah, coccidemia. Coccidemia. Yeah, coxidemia. yeah it, uh, we got a, a, a whole video on that. It would really be helpful. So, Lonnie? Okay. Uh, she had two bulging discs and SI joint pain. So the question is, is it a good idea to use the ball? I probably wouldn't. Uh, I would try McKenzie technique, which, again, if you Google McKenzie right. technique, um, and, you know, the, the basis of that, we can show at least the press up, huh? Right. And I, I think it really depends on not so much the diagnosis. I don't know if that was come from a scan or, but what are the symptoms? Do you have pain, numbness, tingling down your leg or not? She, she has lower back problems. If she yeah. just has lower back problems and no pain or symptoms down her leg, you the know, bulging disc may not be the problem. Right. It may, you know, the scan might show a bulging disc, but if you don't have any symptoms down your leg, it may be something else. Um, we just did a video on this where uh, we had a chart in a, from a book that we recommend that shows, like at age 50, like 50% 50 of the people, 60% of the people have a bulging disc with no pain. No symptoms. So, no symptoms. So, so what the scan shows it, so then it, it draws your attention to that. When the problem may be something else like maybe the facet joint or right. something of that nature. So just over the internet, it's really hard to give advice. Without, a specific one on that one. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but I, I, I don't know. The ball thing, it, it's always, you know, does it, uh, is it painful to do? If it's painful, I wouldn't do it. Right. You should so. get relief. Very quickly, it should feel good when you're done, and it's like, oh, that was good. So, uh, use use that uh, idea. What does so she say? Somebody's asking uh, exercises for compressed C3, C4, and C5. Again, that's a cervical problem. I, again, I would do look up again, McKenzie, uh, M C K E N Z I E, uh, Bob and Brad, because. Right. Um, that we go all the way through the techniques, it's just too much. I mean, it would be step by step what, what exercises. You're always trying to find 
what exercises reduce the pain? Right. That's the key right. when you have a cervical problem. And if you can't find one, then physical therapy may not help. Right. I mean, you got to find the motion that helps right. decrease the pain. Right. And if you're just doing this on your own and you're not able to get it to this, it's time to go see a therapist and uh, get some professional help because it, these can be pretty complicated at times. So someone says, uh, Lorraine Blake, we, we've had her. She, we've seen her. She's been a fan for many years. Okay. She's having pain in uh, her upper foot. But it, it sounds like it's swollen in the upper arch. When, oh. Whenever you get into the arch, I'm thinking plantar fasciitis. Right. Aren't you, Brad? But if she's got swelling, it, you're probably not going to use a ball to work on. No, no, no. It's going to no. irritate and get it worse. So yeah. uh, anytime point. there's swelling, redness, uh, inflammation, you don't want to use the ball. The ball is for getting tight muscles to relax. So, what you may want to do instead is you could take a water bottle and freeze it. Sure. And then you could roll that on there and that would help calm the swelling down. Sure. The other thing you can do is, you know, we got lots of stretches we want you to do when you got plantar fasciitis. So I'm taking my hand and I'm pulling my toes toward me. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm doing this stretch. I want you to do that stretch before you get out of bed. And you can do it at night too, and you can do it throughout the day. But always be wearing your shoes. Don't walk around barefoot. Sure, right. And uh, also, um, eventually, if it doesn't get any better, you might wear a night splint um, because the, the splint would help keep it in the right position. Hold your and, foot and dorsal yeah. flexor. Yeah. What we used to have it right around here, Bob. I don't know where that went. I know we've got it in the clinic somewhere. Yeah. Here. Sorry about that. So she have a partial tear of the hamstring. So is the tennis ball still good Sorry. to use? Okay, a partial tear of the hamstring. Now, if she if she answers this, let me know, Lonnie. Um, if a lot of hamstring tears are usually in the mid, right in the mid muscle here, and you certainly could try it. I I don't know if it's gonna. I, I'd almost do maybe a, more of a hand massage on it and, and go across it like this. If it's up in the sit bone, you could try it there. But again. You want to make sure that it's all within pain tolerance. Um, the mu if you have a tear in your hamstring and it's in the mid muscle, they tend to respond a lot better and they get better a lot faster than the other ones do if it's up on the where the muscle attaches. So she didn't say where it was, Bonnie. Okay. Brad, what do you got? Dave is asking about uh, he's got some clicking in his shoulder and he's uh, wondering about that. And I guess. I'm not on time here. <laughs> if you've got clicking or calling, it could be crepitus, uh, where you get I mean, a shoulder movement or any joint and you get these clicking or, or noises, if there's no pain associated with it, you have normal range of motion, don't get too excited about it. it yeah. It's the way the body works. We're not, the body is noise, uh, you know, like we're not human atlases and we have a perfect body. Speak so, for yourself, Brad. Yeah, okay. By the way, sometimes it can be caused by that bone shifting forward in the shoulder, sure. and eventually that usually does lead to pain. I'll show the one, Brad. I'll just show the one exercise you can try and see if it stops your clicking. You're going to put your hand on a countertop, and this is the shoulder that's giving me trouble. I'm pushing down on the countertop. On yep. Side. I'm pushing down. I'm still pushing down as I come forward, as I come back. I repeat this like five times, do it a couple times a day, yep. and just see if there's less clicking then. Right. We're getting that bone set down into the socket. We're going to see if that decreases the, the clicking. And you bring up a good point, Bob. Actually, we even some simple exercises like oh, yeah. scapular retraction. Exactly. You know, do 10 of those. So he's, you know, squeezing, he's squeezing his shoulder blades together. Yeah, you go ahead. He's squeezing his shoulder blades together. Even that throughout the day, sometimes it helps uh, calm these shoulder issues down. She answered that now. She said in the mid. Mid-back? Mid, okay, that's good. That's a good sign. She's saying the mid-hamstring. And, yeah, you could try the ball. I just, because it's such a big muscle, the ball is sometimes not enough. The six-inch roller. Yeah, you might use a roller instead. But, um, actually, well, we might as well put a plug in for this. <laughs> um, we're big fans of the, the Pure Wave Massager. And this is listed down in our list of products. Sure. This thing because it's such a big muscle it's hard to massage you take this thing and you can this thing will do the job right it'll get deeper in the muscle and, and even this well. pointer it's got three attachments that that pointer attachment is more mean, aggressive right, right. Yeah. It'll, it'll get into that larger hamstring muscle all right 
Uh, any tips for subscapular subscapular muscle relief? Oh, that's a good question. I, I think she says the front of her shoulder feels like I'm not so sure a girl or guy. The front of my shoulder feels like it's about to cramp when I pull my arm behind my back. Oh, so she she is doing the subscapularis. She must have watched our other video. Oh, yeah. <laughs> previous testing for that. Um, I don't know, on the subscapularis, it's, it is kind of, you can't get to it to massage it. Uh, a therapist, ther you know, a massage therapist or a physical therapist. Could get in there. Yeah, you can get in there. And actually, we have a video demonstrating that. It's something that you're not going to do if you don't know what you're doing. Um, yeah. It's, it's a tough, that's a tough muscle. I to would, you know, if, if I had trouble with that, I, I would probably, one thing I, I, I would work on is probably just working on increasing your shoulder extension, extension. And, and internal rotation, sure. I think. Yeah, it's one of those things that I think she's going to have to, or he's going to have to try. And yeah, see we, how we don't spots. know. I mean, because it, that's the tough one because we don't know what is really causing your pain. Right. Uh, and, and we might give you the wrong advice that right. we tell you that. I can't remember a lot of these things over the internet. Without the person in front of you, boy, we'd be doing all kinds of things to, to know what to say. Oh, but, some of you guys are going to come and join us. We yeah. Could, uh, we could take a look at you. Lon. What about hypermobile uh, AC joint? Joint clicks and pops, then get rotating pain along clavicle and drops. Oh. Will the ball massage help? Probably not. Probably, uh, yeah. yeah. An ACL joint, they said? AC. AC. Oh, AC. AC. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, AC. Yeah, I, I think that's a strengthening issue. We, you need to get the the anterior deltoid, the the pec major, and, and work the muscles so they get stronger to stabilize that joint. It's a tough one when right. that when that one's. I mean, one thing you got often to me, Brad, you got to let it rest to some extent. Sure. You're going to calm down. Yeah. I've had some luck sometimes by pushing down on the joint and. And at the same time, raising the arm, that's a little bit of a mulligan technique. Right. They push right. down and push back on it. Sure. On the collarbone. But, yeah, that's a, it, it's there, a tough joint. Yeah, that, is, it a, is this something that just happened? Was there an injury? There's a lot of variables that come into There's that. There's no severe injury. Um, it, we see it sometimes in weightlifters, um, heavy weightlifters, uh, if they do a lot of bench press, the, sure. the end of the clavicle gets right. wore out. Um, <laughs> and then again, in that case, there's something no, not much you can do except stop the heavy lifting and, sure. and let it calm down. Right. So, well, we take one or two more here. Um, someone just said uh, they wish we could do more videos geared towards the student population for the DPTs, um, oh. the doctorate of physical therapy. Right. Sure. You know, we're trying to keep this more for the lay person. There are channels out there that are more geared towards. Right. Uh, the students, right? Uh, and we'd love to do it. As a matter yeah. of fact, we've got a, a, a therapist right now who's going to be graduating next March. He's worked with for us for years. I want to get him to come in yeah. and do a good video that would be really focused on that. But again, we've got literally you know hundreds of thousands of people listening, and most of them are, are lay not. people. Right. Yeah. Lonnie, you got one more or not? What's so Lonnie, funny? Lonnie's laughing. <laughs> It's a yeah, serious it's work, Lonnie. Come on, stay in the test. She has a ter terrible pain on the right shoulder, I closer really to like the neck, and on the same yeah. side of the neck. Okay. But we'll do maybe some. Oh, issues. no, and the question is, she's not sure if it's connected to arthritis. Oh, uh, I, I would say, again, if you're feeling it in the neck and the shoulder, it's probably coming from the neck. Mm -hmm. And again, the key to this generally is going to find out so, which repeated motion takes away that pain, stops the pain from spreading down to the shoulder, maybe even makes it go up into the neck. It could be arthritis, absolutely. There's no doubt about right. it. I mean, right. um, but it could also be a lot of other things, too. Right, that, that's, um, a, that's a pretty broad question. All right, Brad, we've been on long enough. People are probably, you know, think we're contemplating suicide right now. Well, wow, there's been a wonder what are these guys doing. And not only that, right. I'm getting hungry about it. All right, thanks. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Watch us next week. Thanks for coming.